Hey everybody, it's Lon Zybin. We've got another mini PC to take a look at today. It is something from a company called Codlix, kind of a crazy name. This is their GN41. It is powered by a quad-core Celeron N4100 processor, so it's equipped very similarly to many other mini PCs we have looked at. However, the price point on this for what they offer, I think, is pretty competitive. So we're going to be taking a look at this and how well it works in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this did come in free of charge from Codlix. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little computer is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This costs $230 with Windows 10 installed. But there's also a Linux version that has Ubuntu for $217 with the same configuration. Uh, so you may want to look at that if Windows is not important to you. Again, it's got that quad-core Celeron N4100 processor. The RAM is not upgradable, but they maxed it out at 8 gigabytes. So you get the full amount of RAM right out of the gate for, I think, a pretty reasonable price point. And then it's got 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in. But you can also expand the storage. There's a spot here for a 2.5 inch SATA drive, so you can slide in an SSD underneath the computer here. Uh, there is also a M2 SATA slot inside, but you have to take the entire computer apart to get at it. Uh, we did that on the Extras channel the other day. It will not work with an NVMe hard drive, but an M2 SATA, uh, they say up to 512 gigabytes, should work fine. So you do have a good amount of storage capacity on this one if you add some hard drives to the mix. It is completely fanless. It's got a small heat sink and spreader inside, as you can see from our Extras channel teardown of it. Uh, so it is completely quiet on that front. Now it does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board. It will work on 802.11 AC networks. You also have the ability to hardwire it to the network with the gigabit ethernet connection here. Also on the back is a headphone jack, two USB 2.0 ports. So this is where I would plug in your keyboards and mice and everything. Uh, next to the ethernet port is an HDMI output. Uh, this will do 60 hertz at 4K, like many of these Gemini Lake machines can do. Uh, but note there is only one display output that can get you there, because the second display output is only VGA. So if you are looking for something that can output to more than one 4K display, this is probably not going to be the computer for you. Would have liked to have seen another display port or HDMI port over there. Uh, your power goes in here, and then you've got a reset switch there for what looks like the BIOS. Now on the front, we have a USB Type-C connector. Uh, this is running just with data, though, so you can't get uh, display output through this USB-C port. Uh, some of these mini PCs can do that, but not this one. Uh, next to it are two USB 3.0 ports, and then you've got a micro SD card slot there, along with your power switch to fire it up. And it is Visa mountable, so you can put it on the back of a monitor if you want, and they include a mounting bracket in the box to do that. So now that I have my monitor out, let's take a look and see how it performs. We'll begin first with my YouTube channel and a 1080p 60 frames per second video. Everything appears to be running just fine here, as you can see. No drop frames or anything that would uh, inhibit us from having a good browsing experience, so that was good. We also loaded up the nasa.gov homepage, and it was also very responsive, uh, just like we've seen on many other Gemini Lake mini PCs at this point. So as a basic computer, I think it will do fine. We also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test, and there we got a score of 64.1 which puts it right in line with all the other Gemini Lake computers we've looked at uh, with the same or similar processor over the last couple of months. And that also lines up well on version two of that test too. So let's move on now to gaming. We started with Rocket League, which ran at about 15 to 20 frames per second at 1080p. We were getting about 20 to 30 frames per second at 720p, both of these at the lowest possible settings, not spectacular. Uh, we also ran Half-Life 2, which of course is an older game. Uh, that one ran at a full 60 frames per second at 1080p. And I've often found that these mini PCs really are well suited for older games, uh, not the newer ones. And this Half-Life example is a great example of what really runs nicely on these. Uh, we also checked out Shovel Knight and we got about 50 frames per second there, so not quite full speed. And we also booted up the Dolphin GameCube emulator running Wave Race and we saw 
Uh, performance just under 30 frames per second. We have seen better performance out of actively cooled N4100 chips. Uh, this one is going to suffer a bit because it doesn't have a fan to cool itself off and that will impact performance in a number of uh, games and other high stress kind of activities. On the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 2,451. That does put it on the lower end of the spectrum for this particular chipset, uh, but not surprising given the fact that it is a fanless device. Uh, by comparison, if you look at the Pepper Jobs Mini PC running with the same chip, uh, it was doing much better because it is actively cooled and it doesn't throttle itself down the hotter it gets. Uh, we also ran the 3D Mark Fire Strike stress test, and there we got a score of 96.2%, uh, which actually surprised me. I was expecting a lower score than that, uh, but nonetheless, it uh, will throttle a bit as it is placed under load. And we also loaded up a little app called Power Max that we've been playing around with lately. Uh, that will stress the CPU and all of its cores, and you can very quickly see how a full load might impact overall performance. And it didn't take long for uh, the computer to throttle from 2.3 gigahertz down to about 1.6 gigahertz, only a minute or two before it hit the wall there. So you will uh, see a reduction in performance the more you place this computer under load. It is not unusual though for a fanless PC to have that characteristic. The only way it can cool itself off is to not run as hot, and that is what we're seeing here. And I also hooked up my kilowatt to the computer to see what its power consumption was. At idle, we were looking at about four watts. And then when we placed the computer under load with the PowerMax application, it went up to about 8.5 watts. And then as it began throttling, it dropped down to about six. So you can see exactly how it goes about cooling itself. It just brings in less power, which in turn, of course, generates less heat. And that is what you're seeing there on the kilowatt. So let's move on now to home theater, and we're running the Jellyfish test file, which is an HEVC file, 140 megabits per second, 10 bit at 4K. No drop frames out of that. That's one of the things that the Gemini Lake chips can do quite well. Uh, we also tested a few Blu-ray MKV movies. We were able to successfully have the computer auto switch into 24P mode. It was also able to pass lossless audio. Uh, DTS HD from my Star Wars movie was working fine. So it could probably do okay as a, a basic 1080p kind of uh, home theater device. The problem with these Gemini Lake chips is that although they do support 4K output as this one does, they don't support HDR. So that is limiting its use for 4K home theaters, but I think if you're looking for 1080p playback, this should work just fine. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux capability. We've got Ubuntu 18.10 here working just fine. Audio, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Bluetooth, uh, all appear to be working as expected, and we've been seeing this across the board on many of these Gemini Lake computers. Remember, they have a version of this that just runs Ubuntu without the Windows license, so you can save yourself a couple of bucks by going in that direction. So if you're looking for a silent way to run Linux, I think this one should work out just fine. So overall, I think it's a pretty good value for what they've put together here. Uh, I like the fact that you're getting it maxed out with its RAM from the get-go, and then the storage options are pretty nice here too, in that you can add that SATA hard drive and an M SATA hard drive to get a decent amount of storage put into it as well. The only disadvantage is that it will throttle itself a bit, so if you are going to be stressing the computer, maybe having it run as a Plex server or trying to play some games on it, uh, the performance will not be consistent. Again, that is consistent with other fanless PCs we have looked at. If you want more consistent performance, you may want to look at that Pepper Jobs PC we reviewed a few weeks back, which is focused on not throttling at all. And then, of course, the Intel NUX are also another option that have uh, faster processors built in. But this one, I think, for the starting price is pretty reasonable. And if you understand its limitations, given the fanless design, I think you'll be pretty happy with it. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.